Joy Yang, Chief Greater China Economist of Mirai Asset Securities. Joy, thanks for coming in on mm -hmm. your day off here. <laughs> okay, well, you know, this figure, slightly, uh, slightly lower than anticipated, but we shouldn't be reading too much into that, should we? Well, actually, I think PMI is a quite good indicator for uh, China's growth momentum. Um, but I have, warned the I have to warn the market that uh, um, this official PMI has strong seasonality. So usually in March and April, you will see a strong rebound in the PMI. But this time, the rebound in March and April is quite shallow. So this means if you take out the seasonal effects... What is the seasonal effect here? Where is that coming from? Well, for example, take April as an example. April is usually stronger than March by an average of 1.7. But this time, it's only higher by 0.2. So that's why... Uh, you are actually below the March reading by 1.5. But what are the actual seasonal factors which mean that we get that surge in April? Well, yes, exactly. So that's why I think if you take uh, seasonal effects out, you will see uh, March and April actually represents deterioration from the February reading. Oh, so how does that sit with the HSBC uh, PMI, the flash PMI we yeah. get from there? HSBC has more uh, sample and tw tiled towards the small enterprises. And actually for the official PMI, you also have breakdown for big enterprises and for small uh, and medium enterprises. And if you just look at the small uh, and medium enterprises for the official PMI, they recorded about 48 this month. So it's quite similar to the HSBC. BC reading this month. Okay, so when we look at this and we see the first quarter and we saw how we had that slowdown to 8.1% GDP mm -hmm. growth, people said, well, that's probably the trough. Uh, well, does this indicate that perhaps the second quarter could be the trough? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, there's a uh, quite a big chance that second quarter is going to be weaker than Q1 because um, we see that external environment has sort of stabilized, but we don't see drivers in the growth yet um, because we don't see significant policy easing uh, that has taken place yet. And we are waiting for that to pull the economy out of the trough. But will it? Yeah. Will there be? I think they have to around middle of the year because this year the political transition is the overwhelming uh, theme. And uh, given that they have to uh, achieve the growth target, which I think will have to be above 8% at least, I think they will have to start is at least um, no later than mid of the year. Okay, mm -hmm. so how are they going to do it? Is it going to be more cuts in the reserve ratio or will we actually get interest rate cuts proper? Well, if they just cut the triple I, I don't think it's going to help much because the capital inflows is weaker this year, so it's just neutralized the impact of the weaker capital outflows. So I think they definitely need to do two things. One is to cut the interest rate and the second is to uh, uh, increase, the, uh, sorry, uh, the other is to increase the loan to deposit ratio. Okay, so, but what about uh, a stimulus package out of China as well? There's been a bit of a growing talk about that. Do you think we'll get something? Yes, I think actually something might have happened already. For example, the social housing has accelerated its construction already. And also, if you look at investment by different components, we see that investment by SOEs and also investment uh, in the infrastructure has already bottomed out in the past three months. So I think something has happened already on the ground. What about the inflation picture? Because, you know, we've been seeing what's been going on with mm -hmm. the soya bean price and yeah. how they've been rallying at the moment, and yeah. that of course has a feed through, pardon the uh, pun there, uh, in th through the whole food chain, if you will. Mm -hmm. So is inflation licked, or will it rear its uh, ugly head towards the end of the year again? Well, I think inflation is going to come down uh, for the headline figure because uh, particularly in June and July, the high base effect is going to kick in. Uh, and also we see the food prices in the past months has declined already. And I think the biggest risk to China's inflation is supply shock to food prices. But, but there's also the wages going up too, which also could be the another contributory factor. Exactly. But uh, I think it's getting tighter in the labor market, but still there is lots of capacity. So I think the pass through from the wage to the non-food uh, non inflation is still quite contained at the moment. So I wouldn't worry about inflation, at least for this year, but for the medium term, probably we're targeting something about 4% rather than the 2%, which we have been having uh, for the past decade. So, I mean, the, the, the question, of course, remains uh, that leaves the door wide open for more interest rate cuts, and uh, that could be the stimulus that the Chinese economy needs. Yes, but the interesting thing is that uh, the CPI this year is going to be V-shaped. The button is probably in July. So this means if they say don't cut the interest rate by July, probably they will be under pressure because you will see headline inflation increase again, and then they will be under pressure not to cut it anymore. So my forecast is an interest rate cut either in July or, or maybe never this year. Okay, and, and Joy, what does that mean when it comes to, of course, uh, the currency here? Because we've widened the trading band and yes. uh, we've seen a uh, side appreciation take place, mm -hmm. but uh, the currency can go up as well as down, can't it? Exactly. Uh, I think the widening the trade band just means the currency is going to be more flexible. And actually, this is one important step to make renminbi more internationalized. Um, but if you t we talk about fundamentals, I still see renminbi uh, in real terms has appreciation room. Joy, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, on your day off. Mm -hmm. uh, Joy Yang there from uh, Mirai Asset Management. Thank you very much. Look at that uh, mm -hmm. purchasing managers index coming through from China.